This is the fourth in our series of videos looking at how we complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. The aim of this video is to offer a point of reference to help you integrate a NAS into your home network. And while Synology may offer many different models of NAS, the same basic principles that we walk you through in this video can be applied to all Synology NAS devices. In our previous video, we completed a short tour of the Disk Station Manager's user interface. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you assign a static IP address to your NAS. At the moment, the wireless router in our home network is automatically issuing IP addresses to any devices that connect to the network. An IP address is a unique number that any device connected to our home network needs if it wants to be able to communicate with any other devices on the network. As no two devices can have the same IP address, a service built into our router called DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is used to manage a pool of IP addresses. When a device connects to our home network, DHCP will automatically assign an IP address from its pool of IP addresses. Then DHCP keeps track of which addresses have been assigned to which devices, ensuring that there are no address conflicts. The type of IP address assigned by DHCP is known as a dynamic IP address. This is because each IP address is only temporarily issued to a device when it's connected to our network. When a device is removed from our network, the IP address is returned to the address pool. Unfortunately, when using a dynamic IP address, if a device goes offline or the router is restarted, there is no guarantee that that device will receive the same IP address it had before. As our NAS will need to have an IP address that will remain constant, especially if we want to use services like Plex or web hosting, we need to use something called a static IP address. As the name suggests, a static IP address is an address that is assigned to a device for it to permanently use. In other words, the IP address of our NAS will not change regardless of either the router's DHCP service or the NAS being shut down or restarted. While many routers offer a feature that allow you to reserve the IP address assigned to a device from DHCP, if you ever have to replace your router, because you have not assigned a static IP address to your NAS, you will find that you have to spend considerable amounts of time reconfiguring your network because any reserved IP addresses will no longer be valid and your NAS will have reverted back to receiving a dynamic IP address from DHCP. As there are so many different models of router on the market, assigning a static IP address to your NAS will require some research on your part as you will have to find out how to adjust the DHCP settings on your model of router. However, so you can see the basic principles of what we are proposing, we will be demonstrating changing the DHCP settings on a Synology RT1900 AC router. First, we need to log on to our router using our administrator's account. Next, we need to locate the DHCP settings for the router. On this router, it is located in Network Center, Local Network, and then within the General Settings. Within DHCP Server, we have two fields called Start IP Address and End IP Address. This is our address pool. You can see that the start IP address is 192.168.1.2. This is because our router needs to use a static IP address, so is using 192.168.1.1. As no two devices can use the same IP address, our router's DHCP pool has to start at 192.168.1.2. As we want to use additional static IP addresses in our network, 
we're going to adjust the start IP address to 192.168.1.20. This will leave us with 19 IP addresses that we can manually assign to any devices that we want to give a static IP address to. Let's apply these changes and then log out of our router. At this stage, it might be a good idea to reboot your computer so that the computer receives an updated IP address from DHCP. Let's now connect to our NAS using find.synology.com. From within the Web Assistant, you can see that currently our NAS has been assigned with an IP address from the router's DHCP address pool. This IP address is 192.168.1.23. Let's connect to our NAS and log in with an administrator's account. From within the Disk Station Manager, we need to select Control Panel. Under Connectivity, we need to select Network. We are now presented with a general panel. As you can see, there is an option to change the name of the server. Then we have something called the default gateway, which has been assigned with the same IP address as our router. As the name suggests, the default gateway is simply a path to allow the NAS to access services outside of our home network, for example, the internet. So this setting is simply identifying the router as being the gateway for the NAS to access the internet. The option IPv6 default gateway is blank. This is because most home networks still only use IPv4 and our network is no exception. The setting manually configure DNS server is disabled. This is because we currently do not use our own domain name system. You can see that the settings for preferred DNS server contain the IP address for our router. This is because DNS is being provided by our internet service provider via the settings in our router. Finally, in this panel, we have proxy settings. A proxy server is often used by big organizations like universities or corporations as a way to improve internet performance and security while also being able to monitor employees' use of an internet connection. As using a proxy server within a home network could be considered overkill, if you do need to control internet usage, you might be better served using the traffic monitoring services built into your router. Let's select Network Interface. You can see that we have three options. LAN, or Local Area Network, PPPoE, and IPv6 tunneling. However, as LAN is currently the only active connection, it is this option that we need to adjust. If we select the down chevron, we are presented with additional information related to the LAN connection. We can see that the NAS is using DHCP to connect to the network. We are also shown the dynamic IP address, subnet mask, and IPv6 address that DHCP has assigned to the NAS. The final piece of information being displayed relates to the speed and type of network connection our NAS is using. As we want to assign a static IP address to this NAS, we need to select the Edit button. From within Edit, we now need to select the option Use Manual Configuration. If we now select the IP address field, we can assign this NAS with the static IP address that we wish to use. If you remember, when we adjusted the DHCP address pool, 192.168.1.1 was assigned to our router but we also have 18 additional addresses excluded from our DHCP address pool, any of which can be assigned to this device. In order to create a mindset that logically structures how we assign static IP addresses, we are going to assign static IP addresses in order of importance. So if the router is the most important device in our home network and has a static IP address of 192.168.1.1, 
then our NAS will be assigned the next sequential static IP address of 192.168.1.2. The subnet mask should continue to be 255.255.255.0, while the gateway and DNS settings, because they allow the NAS to communicate with the router, should both remain 192.168.1.1. We will leave the setting default gateway ticked, while the other options, set MTU value manually and enable VLAN, will both remain disabled. When we select OK, our settings will be saved and our NAS will use 192.168.1.2 as its IP address. Let's log out of the DSM and again load the Web Assistant. When the Web Assistant loads, we can confirm that the NAS is using the IP address we assigned it. However, if after assigning a static IP address to your NAS, you find that certain devices are reporting connection issues or can't browse the internet, simply reboot those devices. When that device is rebooted, your router's DHCP service should automatically assign that device with a new dynamic IP address, and you will find that the device will start to work correctly again. So to recap, in this video we adjusted the DHCP address pool on a router to allow us to have static IP addresses. We then assigned our NAS with a static IP address. In the next video in this series, we'll be taking a look at the file service options for our NAS. This will include enabling SMB and AFP services as we prepare for the creation of network share points.